And in the southwestern suburbs, something sinister's lurking in the dark. It's a silver van. Interceptor Gav Hall is riding solo in the unmarked, hunting down a suspect motor. Advanced driver Gav's personal philosophy revolves around the three Fs, football, fitness and the force. Big van. The Ford Transit he's currently looking for is suspected of being involved in a burglary earlier in the evening. A, a van trying to smash into a business premise. There was one earlier tonight. It's probably going to be the same one. The team's on high alert because it's been reported that a vehicle was stolen in one of the earlier incidents. Apparently they're still present. And just meters up ahead. A transit followed by a white car goes cruising past as a fair old lick. Gab falls in. Maybe behind the two vehicles at speed, actually. A van and a small white car. They're picking up speed, they ain't got VRMs. Sergeant Neil isn't too far behind. It's left, left. Because Gab's in the unmarked, the suspects don't know they're being tailed. It's slowing me down from the van. The van's now overtaking another vehicle. And now Gab's having second thoughts. Not sure these are involved. Uh, they're coming to a natural. As the motor pulls over, Sergeant Neil rocks up, blazing the blues, which changes everything. Both failing to stop NH. Stand by. Reverse lights on. Up ahead, Neil goes for the box. Yeah, they've uh, rammed the way out. Slight contact with Neil. Neil, take uh, comms, please. The white car boots it, disappearing into the night. But with two interceptors on his tail, Banman knows the game's up. No. Put your hands behind your back, you're more, more in there. No, no, no more. Right. Sorry. You're under arrest, mate. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Just give an update. 6-6, six, six, quickly. Driver of van detained. Uh, concentrate on the other vehicle, please. The slick strike from Gavin Neal has left the driver dazed and confused. You don't have to say anything, but it may army defence. Don't mention one question. Something which later on in court, anything you do say may be given evidence. You understand that? Yeah, yeah. A hammer's just fallen from his pocket. All right, stand up. All right, stand on that. Hotel, it's dangerous, aren't you? Not enough. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry's not good enough, mate. No, no, but what you've done. Please stop, I'll tell you. It's a good start, but the lad in the white car remains at large. Yeah, we'll let uh, we'll around. Interceptors Maka and Dan are on the case. It's gone that way, hasn't it? Yeah. Word comes in from a Derbyshire ARB unit that the white car has crossed county lines. But the status of the pursuit remains unclear. until the boys spot something up ahead. We're with the uh, crawler in Derbyshire. The driver lies injured on the pavement. And now cops face a different kind of emergency. What's your name? The male has got um, wounds. Can we have a RV with a kit? They've uh, rammed the way out. Slight contact with Neil. In a suburb of Nottingham, a lightning fast strike on a Ford Transit by Gavin Neil. Kill on the floor, no. Put your hands behind your back. Resulted in one in cuffs. You're under arrest, mate. Yeah, sorry, sorry. While his mate, who made off in a white car, got picked up by a Derbyshire armed response unit. One wound to a male on the floor. The injured driver is now in desperate need of medical attention. Derbyshire cops are doing first aid on him now. 
They've got him out of the car, but he's also got a wound to his stomach. It's not ascertained as to how that has happened yet. Interceptors are first aid trained and carry kits with them at all times. Yes, What's your first name, pal? Yes, breathing. Currently receiving first aid on the floor. Mail's not giving his surname at the moment with us. No further detail. It's still unclear how the man got his wounds. But thanks to the first aid he's received at the scene, he's finally stable. Breathing all right? Ambulance is three minutes away, mate. Oh, yeah. With the ambulance en route, Dan satisfied the drivers in safe hands. Meanwhile, the driver of the transit, despite a catalogue of potential offences, seems baffled by his arrest. What am I locked up for now? What are you locked up for? Dangerous driving, failing to stop, attempted burglary or burglary. I don't quite... It is a burglary. Burglary at a business premise around the corner. You told me you're probably banned, so I'll just go and tell you that you're under arrest for danger, uh, disqualified driving and go and equip to steal because you've got ammo in your pocket. A healthy rap sheet indeed. Anything else? Suspicion of theft of this. What, the van? Yeah. Oh, you're also under arrest and suspicion of theft of this van as well, which is remember you're under caution. Let's hope someone's keeping count. Thanks, mate, for coming. Yeah. With the man's taxi having arrived, he safely bundled off to the Nick. Now, Macca and Dan have arrived to fill the boys in on what went down with the driver of the Toyota. Mate, he's in a bad way, that lad. Is it? He's got... He's that injured that yeah, he's man. just stopped the car during the pursuit, right. got out and just stumbled towards the cops. The interceptors reckon the lad could have got his injuries during the raid earlier on. It's a stolen van. Luckily for me, Neil's been with me. This van driver here has rammed Neil, so he's been arrested for dangerous driving. Derbyshire police have managed to get that car and an offender in it. Inside that van, there are a load of, load of car keys, which we suspect are from stolen vehicles. So there's a lot of inquiries to be done, but in terms of um, the, you know, the evidence we managed to gather so quickly, it, it's, it's a great job. Obviously, everything we do, unlike these people, we have to risk assess. Um, and all our decision-making is ratified by people in the control room. So the information is constantly being fed in and we're making some very, very quick decisions. And the job's gone textbook. A few hours later, police visited the scene of the ram raid where multiple car keys were found to have been taken. The van driver was convicted of burglary, going equipped and driving whilst disqualified and without insurance. He was disqualified for four years and sent to prison for 28 months. No further action was taken against him for dangerous driving or theft of a motor vehicle. The Toyota driver pleaded guilty to dangerous driving and he awaits sentencing. Your shoe, we'll get your shoes. On crime's front line... Yo, turn your camera off, bro, before I spit on you. There's not much worse than the threat of getting a gobful. Don't you spit. But there's a nifty bit of gear that can help stop a wrong un from blowing his top. Stop struggling and calm it down. Nobody's scared of you, pal. Put your little hood on. The introduction of the spit hood as a piece of kit for us to be using, um, it, it's, it's a brilliant bit of kit. If that person's going to make the decision to start spitting at people, then we need to have a, a, a method of controlling that. I'm not going to stand with my hand over their mouth because then that opens up a, a hole. Uh, and he's wanted. 
This curry-loving copper joined the force to lock up the bad guys, and the bloke thereafter tonight is wanted on suspicion of GBH. He'll know that he's wanted. He's one of these characters that will know, knows that he's up to no good, and knowing that he's, he'll know that he's disqualified, and he'll, he'll do everything he can to get away. So it'd be a really good one to drop behind and get him locked up for, and uh, hopefully get him disqualified for a bit longer. Local units have headed to near the suspect's house. I don't know, might just get him as he's parking up. Left the thing. Parking up. Left the thing. The blokes failed to stop in the past. That's the car there, the lights are on lot. But not tonight. Oh, they've got him. Rob follows the noise. Are you got me on camera? Have you got me on camera? Well, was Chuck. Have you? Have, have you got me on camera? Oh, Comes back to your bedroom. Listen, have you? Yeah? We you camera? You little knob! Calm yourself hey. down. Don't be right. Put him on the floor. Get him on the floor. Right. Chill. Don't be aggressive like that. Calm yourself. Chill. Calm yourself. Man. Tell me. You're under arrest. On chill. So you didn't have to say it. Chill. 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 The bloke's kicking off, but quickly in cuffs. Rob needs to wrestle back control of the situation. Listen, no, 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 you, no, you listen, no, you listen. You are under arrest. You wanted for it. Whatever you say now is just said. Is just said. You need to relax. You need to start relaxing. No, 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 no. You need to remember who's in charge here, and it ain't you. I am. You're not me. I am. I am, bro. To the back. You're also bag. under arrest for driving whilst disqualified, OK? Yeah, He's proving a real handful. Me. Yeah, I'm going to tell you what's happening. Are you yeah, listening to me? Yeah. Are you listening to me? Let and I'm going to tell you what's yeah. happening. Let go of me head. Hey! Let go! If you calm down, we'll order. Let go! The suspect's been cuffed to the front. Spence? Yeah. Come round and face this lady here. No. But due to his aggression, needs restraining to the rear. Spence, you take... Don't know. Take hold of this Have other you, arm. You, you keep hold of him. Bro. You release the cuff. You He's me. resisting, so it's proving tricky. You hurt him. Have you hurt me arms? Yeah. Right. You. Chill out, mate. Listen, he's hurting my. <laughs> he's taken a dislike to Spence and seems to be loading up with snot. All that is pulling out. <laughs> I'm not pulling new here, bro. Look at you. You're not going like that. Look at you, bro. Don't start winding up. Finally, his hands are where they belong. Find me up. Yeah, it's in. It's in. Ah. Lock. Double lock. Locked. Yeah. Restrained, he resorts to a different mode of attack. I'm going to spit on you. Right. Hey, you got spit on? Let's go. Get spit on, then. Spitting at an emergency worker is classed as assault, and the act could potentially transmit a range of infectious diseases. Please, you no, you don't get to speak like that, mate, and then pull it. You need to calm down, then. Thank you. Don't start this crying now. A breathable mesh spit hood will protect the cops. Game over. Oh. Look at me all. Get in there. Get in there. Come on. Come on. Yep. Are you pushing me down? I love you. So you will not. You'll have nobody, mate. You'll have nobody. OK? Be clear about that. Despite the suspect behaving more like a caged animal, Spence keeps his cool. Nothing bad's going to happen. You need to chill out. No one's letting go of you till you chill out. Right. Ready? Yeah. <sighs> You don't. This is one menace they're delighted to get into the traps. We're all good. You've got to remember that he's wanted, knows he's qualified. He'll be really annoyed, I think, that, you know, cops have got him, got him banged to rights by the sounds of things. And that will just fuel him, you know. He'll be on the run. 88's being caught. Uh, so when he finally gets caught, his reaction is animalistic, as you've probably seen, you know. He just slashes out, and then when we take control, 
let him know who's boss, the waterworks start, you know. And he goes through all these different tactics, if you like, to try and get his own way and ultimately try and keep a, a level of control over us. And it's our job to remain professional and let him know who's in charge. And, well, he knows that now, doesn't he? And it's off for a night in the cells for him and no doubt facing quite a few charges, so good job. Have some fun with him. I would not want him in anywhere near a car. Or near a van, it seems. <laughs> Who's driving the van? Dan. Just get going. <laughs> Just get going. Put him on the floor, get him on the floor. The bloke might have majorly kicked off. <laughs> you need to remember who's in charge here and it ain't you. I am! Calm yourself, Jill. But Rob and Spence are grateful at least they didn't get spat on. Jill. I'm gonna spit on you. Right. Have you got spit on? Yeah. I'd rather get punched in the face than get spat out, if I'm honest with you. Have we got the keys? Uh, for the car? Yeah. Oh, I no, I haven't. Got... Has anyone looked in the car? No, I'll, uh, I'll do a quick search. Okie doke. There's some on the front dash, I don't know what's in it. Right. A search of his car reveals some cannabis. Oh dear. Whew. And also something a bit more unexpected. You think he's been to Goose Fair tonight, look? There's one big at Goose Fair. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the only thing he's won tonight. Well, I suppose he's won a, uh, a night at Her Majesty's, hasn't he? Uh, no, not her, sorry. His Majesty's. His Majesty's, yeah. A nasty, dangerous man off the streets for another night. And I'd like to think, given the offences, <laughs> he might even do a bit of time for this. So, good job. Good job. No action was taken against the man for GBH, disqualified driving, or the cannabis found in the car. However, he was found guilty of driving without a licence or insurance, assaulting an officer and failing to provide a specimen. He was disqualified from driving for 17 months, given a community order and sentenced to 20 days of rehabilitation activity. He was also ordered to pay almost £200 in costs. Still to come. Open that door now or you'll lose the door. It's cash and class A's for the knife crime team. He's got about a grand on him. Sarge Pewitt, he's got a load down his back. And a boozed up bozo doesn't know when to quit. We've been called here, haven't we? Because of your behaviour. Mate, just walk. Just go home. Just walk. That's absolutely bad. Just go home. With serious incidents involving knives having risen by almost 50% in just a decade, cops are having to clamp down hard. He's got a knife on him. He's got a knife. <laughs> Nottinghamshire's dedicated knife crime team have taken hundreds of weapons off the streets. I thought it was a lot knife to start with, but it's not. It's a hunting-style knife. But the coppers here know it's a constant battle to keep their streets safe. These are designed for one thing and one thing only, and that's... Putting the fear of God into someone, I think. If you feel that you need to carry a knife, you know, where are you going, who you're hanging out with, what kind of business are you conducting, that you, you need that level of protection. And that's the problem, isn't it? You know, if it's gang-related and you need to carry a knife to protect yourself from other gangs, well, they're equally tooled up with similar weapons. And too many young people, some children, certainly, you know, teenagers, losing lives, end up with a horrendous scarring, and life-altering injuries because of, in a lot of cases, petty drugs you know, battles or territorial battles over, over drug dealing. You know, it's, it's, you've got to question lifestyle choices. It's a fork. Nottinghamshire's inner-city suburbs provide a fruitful hunting ground for the force's tenacious knife crime team. Um, it's that great silver golf that came past us, 70 plate. Today, Ken and Matt have units all over the neighbourhood, looking for a car suspected of involvement in drug dealing. So for, uh, so it's not gone Radford Road outbound. I'll commit towards Alfreton Road. 
when it comes to food, Ken's a man for classic combinations. A thin crust pizza washed down with a glass of Italian red. And on the street, he knows that drugs and knives go together like spaghetti and meatballs. I mean, there's not that many turn-offs he could have had. The golf he's after today has just been spotted by another unit nearby. He's going to try and distance himself from the car. He's turning around. It's uh, only one up now. Well, there's only one front seat uh, occupant. A passenger has reportedly just hopped out of the golf. Yeah, he's walking away. Someone's walking away from it. And he's wandered right into the path of another cop car. <laughs> The lads legged it down an alleyway. Let me out. Let me out. For Matt, it's a case of right place, right time. Up to his taste to stay there. The lads calm and compliant. Get him in cuffs, look. The car's leaving. I'm going to go after the car. So attention turns to his mate. Let go of that. Runners detained. We're just getting to the car now. In a stroke of remarkably good fortune, the golf's attempted getaway has been thwarted by a large lorry. Open that door now or you'll lose the door. Open it now. Open the door! Ken's got a little hammer. He's panicking. Yeah. The threat of which has the desired effect. Cuffs on hands now. You've got cuffs. Give me your hands now. Stop panicking. Give me your hands. And it's job done. Two detained. He's got about a grand on him. At the minute, I haven't found anything else. That's my cash. The passenger's got a large quantity of cash. But Matt can't find anything sinister today. Can you take this cross off the Not at the minute, no. Because he's still being detained. So all eyes are now on the Golf and its driver. Driver's shot straight out, been blocked. I don't think if he, was, if he wasn't blocked, I think he'd have been gone and we'd end up having a pursuit, which can only really mean one thing, they've got something. But I think if that, if that lorry hadn't been there, that would have been a failed stop in this car every day of the week. Cops are sure the lad's got something to hide. But what and where it is remains a mystery. Don't be surprised if there's a knife somewhere. Meanwhile, Joe and Adam have been searching the driver. Sarge P. Wicks, he's got a load down his back. Uh, received. The driver's got suspected Class A's on him. And as for the motor... Jackpot. Didn't have to say anything, but my own defence, if you're not meant to make questions, stuff which you let the line of court, and anything you do say, maybe give them that. Do you understand that? <laughs> Both lads are now under arrest. But for them, a miserable turn of events that's probably put a real dampener on their day. Oh, wow! It's coming down now. But for the cops, it's shaping up to be a scorcher of a job. And it's not over yet. Back at the Nick, both lads are given a more thorough search. The his pockets are clean, but Ken's not giving up yet. Two mobile phones, the smartphone, which is typical of day to day. He's got 13 missed calls since we've been here, so someone's desperately trying to get hold of him. Now it's just a case of trying to get what we can and, you know, with the time available to us. The reality is he wasn't too far away from his home address, so it won't be long until someone's told his, uh, his relatives what's happened. And if there's anything in the address, there's always that risk it's going to go. The team want to search the passenger's home, sharpish. Adam, what we got? But first, something else has been found lurking in the driver's pants. Oh, it's probably about a grand's worth of drugs. As expected from the driver, um, we've got a large um, bundle of what I have no doubt is going to be Class A drugs, and you're looking at heroin and crack cocaine. And I will be surprised if there isn't anything less than 150 individual wraps of Class A drugs in there. From the driver, we've also located a number of mobile phones that are typical for drug dealing, burner-style phones, some more cash um, and things like that. It's a great result, but the team have unfinished business. So it's time to roll back out onto the street. 
So we've got two people in custody and we're looking at two addresses to search. The first one being a stone's throw away from where uh, all this chaos has kind of happened. So this is the home address of the passenger. We're looking for drugs, we're looking for weapons, we're looking for cash, we're looking for anything that kind of assists the investigation in regards to drug supply and possession of criminal property. When they get there, it looks like no one's home. But having acquired a key, the team gets hunting. So I'm just having a look to see if there's anything hidden inside the shoes and then stuffed right down near the toe is a bag, which is going to be suspected. Class A, some sort of powdery substance. Obviously, I'm not going to open it. Overall, police find a significant haul in the house. Around 300 wraps of Class A's worth thousands of pounds. Envelope here, this here. But that's not the half of it. Hunting knife, survivor knife, it says on it. It's just a very horrible knife that I don't see anybody in the UK as a use for, a need for at all. Drug dealers carry these weapons, they have to protect what they've got. They need to protect themselves from being robbed. Obviously, we've got rival gangs trying to rob them, trying to take their turf. So that, that's what they're used for, and it's shocking. Shocking. And yet, sadly, an all too familiar story. It's gone from like a good job to a cracking job now. On the driver of the vehicle, we found sort of a golf, a golf ball type size ball of wraps. Um, and then in the address, we found um, significantly more than that. I would hazard a guess two, three hundred wraps all prepped up as lights and darks in the Rizzlers, like the style that we would normally find. And then we found some bulk bags as well, which are, I'm going to guess are going to be probably about half an ounce each. Um, one looks a bit bigger, but that looks like um, cocaine that's yet to be um, made into crack cocaine. I mean, that, that's a large amount of drugs. You're talking thousands and thousands of pounds worth of drugs there. So for us, that's, that's as good as it gets, really. Later that afternoon, police searched the home of the driver, where they found more cash and another large blade. Both the weapons were seized. The drugs were later analysed and found to be a combination of cocaine and heroin. Both men were arrested for possession of Class A's with intent to supply and possession of criminal property. The investigation is ongoing. Yes, it's drugs and we're the knife crime team, but the amount of times where we start with one and find the other uh, is just really, really frequent, you know, so it makes sense for us to go after both when they're hand in hand. For the interceptors, only three things in life are absolutely certain. Don't do anything silly. Death, taxes, and dealing with drunks on the weekend night shift. Drunk people are the most frustrating people on the planet. You can't get through to him. They shout in your face, they spit whatever's left in the mouth all over you while they're talking to you. A conversation that might take two minutes with somebody who's sober, you know, sometimes when you speak to somebody who's drunk, uh, you know, that conversation will take 10, 15 minutes and, you know, the radio will be going, there'll be jobs coming in elsewhere, but because you've been drawn into this engagement with this drunk person, mm. uh, and it just, you know, takes you away from, you know, real, uh, real matters, really. I think if we could show every drunk person a video of themselves when they're sober, they'd be mortified. <laughs> There's nothing worse than being around drunk people when you're not drunk. Five, two, we're not that far. It's Saturday night. Male in shop shouting and kicking off. Caller thinks he's drunk. Rob and Spencer from the firearms team are en route to a job in the southwest of the city. So we've had a call from the uh, filling station just here. It looks like we've got someone going into the shop, shouting and kicking off, uh, apparently in drink. Uh, 
Yeah, we're just going to go and see what his problem is. Reports suggest the man is now refusing to leave the area. State six. And as they arrive at the petrol station, so too do interceptors Mikey and Ian, who immediately clock someone loitering nearby. Look like magic bomb. Yeah, I thought I heard. It could be the chap they're after, so Rob goes for a quick word with the shop assistant. Hello, mate. Has he gone? Uh, Mikey, and it is that fella you've got there, apparently. Yeah. The one with grey hair, other than being an idiot, has he done anything particularly wrong? Has he, has he committed any crime? The shopkeeper says he felt intimidated by the man's behaviour, so sought refuge in the back office. He's not punched anybody. No, 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 so we're good. All he wants is for the man to go so he can get back to his shift in peace. We'll get rid of him. The bloke's not been violent but he has been making a complete nuisance of himself. All the boys have to do now is get him to go home. Don't understand what you're saying, mate. Which could be easier said than done. Do you want to arrest me? Arrest me. No, 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 look, look, look. Mate, don't talk to no, me. No, 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 please. Don't boys, swear at me. Don't, don't, me. don't swear at me. What do you want to do, mate? Do don't swear do, at me. No, I'll swear if you want to swear. No, no, yeah. no, no, you won't. You're All in a wrong. public place. Do wrong, yeah. You have done something wrong. wrong. You've been intimidating them, you've been shouting at them. Me, you've been... I don't want to have to arrest you. I'm sure you understand. It's Saturday night and we've got better things to be doing. Do you not think? The bloke insists he's done nothing wrong and is refusing to budge. Round the corner, we've been called here. Please, pardon. We've been called here, haven't we? Because of your behaviour. Just, walk. just go home. Just walk. That's absolutely glad. Just go home. Having frightened the shop staff, he's turned his focus on the cops. But playground insults will never derail an interceptor. You need to walk home. Well, rest me down. Excuse me, excuse just me. Walk away. Excuse me, what's your name? What's your name? Five of you here. What's your name? You please five of you. Can... What's your name? What have I done wrong? What's your name? What's your first name? Spencer. What's your first name? Right, I'm not going to keep telling you. What's your name? Well, what does it matter, is it? Right. Well, how old are you? Does it matter how old are you, yeah. sir? I'm 43, but you're arguing like a child. We just want you to go away. I don't want nothing. I'm ready to go home myself. Police spend a significant amount of time dealing with drink-related incidents. And now, fuelled by booze, this fella's getting shirty. Rob must take control. Just, just walk away, go home, and let's end the night here, shall we? So we can continue going, doing what we need to do, and you can enjoy the rest of your night. Sorry, sir. What's, what's your first name? I'm not. I'm not getting into it. Just don't come close to me. Mate, that's assault. No, it's not. Keep you back from me. Don't start getting close to me. Don't get in my personal space. Touching me like that's assault. Yep. Don't get in my personal space. The situation is on a knife edge. And the bloke's got Rob in his crosshairs. Yeah. What's the issue here? You're this, I just want you to go home. Yeah, I want to go home. Are you going to go? Yes, I'm going to go. Right, then get moving. Yeah? After a tense ten minutes... Good. The standoff is finally over. See ya. What am I doing, Ta-da! But it looks like the entertainment is just getting going. Is he still giving us all? They all just left the building. <laughs> Hopefully the King's heading back to Graceland to sleep it off. Because Rob reckons he's lucky not to be off to the jailhouse. Truth be told, if it wasn't the time it is on a Saturday night, I think I'd locked him up five minutes ago, but there's bigger fish to fry tonight. We're a relatively small team responsible for firearms jobs across the whole county. We do not want to be getting tied up with a wally like that that just it just needs to go home. It's a classic case of just a few too many beers, isn't it? Hands behind your back. Still to come. Hands behind your back. Dan unleashes the little red dot. Don't get involved and stay back, pal. It's dinner time on a Wednesday. And interceptors Gav and Dan are looking for something to sink their teeth into. What's that? Off-road bike behind us. 
a motorbike's just whistled past Gab's right ear, along the pavement. He's not even aware of us, is he? The boys are in the unmarked 3 Series, so the biker's oblivious. So why, why use the pavement when you can just use the road? Not only that, he's got no lights on and no helmet either. Hopefully he's going out. <laughs> and he comes to a natural somewhere. Yeah. Because if he is... Do you not think he's gone to us? Don't think so, mate. Dan's only other job before joining the force was in a local supermarket. He's gone from shelf stacker to crime cracker. And top of his shopping list tonight is a dodgy biker. There he is. The bike's pulled over at a junction up ahead. The rider's dismounted and Dan's ready to pounce. With his mates. Mm -hmm. But it looks like the lads finally clocked them. We'll get him here, mate. He's not going to be able to get onto that, is he? Get on the floor. Stay back. Get, get back. back off. Back Stay off. Back. Hands behind your back. Hands behind your back. Hands behind your back. You stay back now. Don't get involved and stay back, pal. The red dots of Dan's taser have worked wonders. Oh. And bought Gab some time to quiz Biker Boy. Right. You're detained because you're riding on that bike on pavements, no lights on. You're going to get a search under Section 1 of Pace for stolen or prohibited articles. I'm PC Gavor from Knox Police Headquarters. Detained for that search, you get a copy of the search record. Do you understand? Hello, Dad. You understand? I've been rested. Right. To add to the lad's woes, his dad's popped out to see what's going on. Oh, Tony, you shouldn't have. No. How old are you? 17. Right. I've got me. Whose bike there. is it? Hmm? Whose bike is it? I just don't know. Right. No, it's not stolen or all that. OK. Is that your dad there? Yeah. You want to tell him what's going off? I've been arrested. You haven't been out that most like here. He has, pal. Yeah. Oh, you on pa on pavements, no lights on, all over the shop. You did. No. Wise words from Dad. Did he have Unfortunately, the lad's mate isn't quite so sensible. Will you do no. me a favour, mate? We just back off for. Yeah, me? he just wanted to get involved, didn't he? No matter how many times he's told, the message just doesn't sink in. I suggest what, you leave me, because I'm going to nick you for public order. All right. So you've sworn at me twice, all on the <laughs> camera, so crack on, mate, because you're going to get nicked. And he's now got a special message for our camera crew. <laughs> it's the final straw. Hands behind your back. You can come oh, as yeah, well, then. That's necessary, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, we've been warned, mate, three times. <laughs> so that's two in cuffs. In your pot. Anything sharp in your pockets? No. Nope. And attention can now turn back to the rider. So we're going to require you to provide a sample of saliva for a drugs test, because you're riding a motorbike, which is a motor vehicle on the road. OK. Yes. I've got to warn you, if you fail to provide a sample, which proves to be positive, I'm not, I'm not, you may be arrested, OK? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not being a dickhead about that. Eh? Well, no, but you're riding a bike round on the street, are you? So why are you expecting to be over? What? On a drug swipe. Probably. Okay. Yeah, well, then there will be something else to contend with, won't it? The lad reckons he'll fail the wipe. Dad, you just stay over the in house. So, understandably, doesn't want his dad to see the results. Do uh, control just need a proper update, mate? Yeah, I'm just going to decide what we're going to do, do with him you? yet. The results will only take eight minutes. Okay. Plenty of time for Dan to chew the fat. I surprised. Did you not clock us around there? No, I hadn't at all. Oh, I couldn't believe it. We're like, we're like, this is gold and he doesn't know we're here. So we followed you around. We couldn't believe when we saw you here. I know, man. Uh, that was a bit dodgy. <laughs> we were like, we couldn't believe our luck. But one man's luck is another man's misfortune. And this lad knows the game's up. If this is positive, you're going to have to go to the police station. I've just admitted it. I've just admitted it, you know. Admitted what? me either way. I'm probably going to be other. What, on cannabis? Probably. OK. I take nothing else. Whatever the results of the test, the lad's mate is still keen to help out in any way he can. By the way, just so he don't get in trouble... Uh, name check on the, the second one, mine. please. He claims the bike belongs to him. NH66, uh, if I pass you a VIN number on this bike, can you run some checks on it, please? 
However, the rider's got no license, no insurance, and the bike is far from roadworthy. So it's being seized. Mate, the moral of that story is it's cost everybody a bit of cash, hasn't it? How much you want one of them worth? 500 quid? No, they're about five, 600 pounds on them. Yeah. Because to get that back, it'd have to make it road legal, register it with the DVLA, number plates, get it through an MOT. Is he going to throw money at that to do that? We'll have 14 days to make that, make that happen. Dad, if you're watching, look away now. Just to make things even worse, mate, you're under arrest on suspicion of failing a roadside drug swipe. You've provided a positive sample for cannabis, right. so, so you didn't have to say anything, time, but it may harm your defence not mentioned when questioned, Sorry, some for which later on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Yeah. So, obviously, it's gone as a positive reading, reading for cannabis. It's no great surprise to the lad, and he's off to Mansfield Nick. But seeing as he's just 17, he'll need a chaperone. Yep. So have you got an older sister or parent? You can have a run to Mansfield, we'll bring him back. To come to Mansfield. Luckily for the lad, Dad's disappeared. Are you an older sister? Thank heavens for big sisters. His sister's coming with us to Mansfield. Yeah. She's just getting would, some shoes yeah, on. Got... She's an adult. And thank goodness for backup. Right, is it heavy? It's gonna be a it's gonna be a few of his lift, I think. From Tendo. Who needs recovery when you've got an interceptor with a van? Saw you standing there, highway broken down. Thought I 